Hi, this is Anna Crow with the Get Real Podcast, where CEOs, CMOs, and communications experts share their real advice. It's six questions under nine minutes because we get to it real fast. So let's get to it. Thrilled to have to get today's guest on. In a few sentences, please tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Michael Bergman, a 30-year employee at Nike that retired six years ago and started an innovation company called Incubator U. And, and um, a lot of the things that I'm doing is applying that methodology, which builds intersections between different industries. That's fantastic. And I know you've worked in several industries, but what would you say is the best thing about being a leader in your industry? Um, I think being a leader in the industry, you know, one, I having the 30 years at Nike, working with one of the best brands in the, in the world, um, and some of the best athletes. So I had the the pleasure of working with some of the best and some of the um, maybe not as great athletes. And um, I think that giving me that perspective as, you know, how people, you know, have dedicated their, their work and their life and being fearless in their approach to their specialty. Um, and that has given me inspiration to continue that within the, the work that I'm doing currently. That's pretty amazing. You, you have such a rich background, and to your point, you've probably been impacted and have impacted so many different leaders throughout your career. Um, I hear from other executives and leaders that creating authentic connections, whether it's your team or your customers, can be challenging with all the noise today. I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, I have a great example of that. So, in, um, so my uh, innovation company is called Incubator U but I'm the president of a nonprofit that is called Portland Track. And <clears throat> as you know, there's really no live sporting events out there currently. Um, but Portland Track has put on three, uh, three or four world-class or actually high performance meets in the Portland area for track and field athletes um, you know, every year. Uh, with COVID, we basically with the ability the inability to gather crowds and large groups we took it we looked at what would serve the athletes and we connected with coaches athletes agents and really put together a program that um we put on three successful world-class track meets in the last month and most of that is because we um have this authentic connection one to help elevate the athlete. We built this trusted relationship with these coaches and agents, but at the same time, we've expanded our reach with the medical community. And we have, you know, strict COVID testing. Every athlete has to have two COVID tests within a 48 hour period, 24 hours apart, even in, to enter the field. And so we've kept the environment safe. We don't have spectators but we had started our own YouTube channel where basically we can live stream it so the world can see the races we're putting on. And as it's turned out, we're one of the only ones in the country that has put on live events. And um, so I think a lot of that is, you know, years of basically building these authentic relationships with these athletes, these brands, these coaches, and, and knowing that we're doing it for the right reasons. We're not making any money on this. It's more about how do we, <laughs> how do we make sure that they are able to elevate their craft. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable. And to your point, I haven't heard of anything like this. Uh, and the fact that you've obviously taken precaution, but also just made something and um, something really powerful during this time. That, that's really impressive. Kudos to you for doing that. Thanks. Yeah. The one of the um, so the primary mantra with incubator U is fearless innovation together and that's really what we're doing you know we're for we had no idea if this would work mm -hmm. but we went ahead with it and 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 it's turned out the last friday night we had 15,000 people viewing live and and two world leading times in the meet that we put on wow very cool we'll, we'll be sure to share the link to that youtube page 
um, to get more people on board. That's great. Um, what would you say, Michael, um, is your advice for other leaders? Um, is there anything else that you think is really important? Yeah, I think during this time, it's really, really important to really kind of throw away the book of mm -hmm. what is traditional and, you know, how to, and it's, it's a time to be authentic and connected and really listen and be empathetic and listen to, um, you know, every, every, you know, a diverse community of, you know, voices. And uh, I think with, if you're open to listening and hearing that, then you're, you're going to, um, one, engage a wider group of people, but then also you you'll find that you'll learn new things and be a be able to apply them in a way today that you know it's not a traditional way of doing things but there's no risk there's there's a high reward and low risk because everything really has been kind of thrown out the window absolutely i i was joking with someone the other day about each week really feeling like it's a month or even longer because we're learning and shifting and changing and figuring new things out right there's no playbook <laughs> That's right gone. there's not yeah yeah no it's so true <clears throat> but i do think that the you know authentic connections to people and um you know being able to be open enough to hear and listen but also seeking intersections from other industries i mean to me that's the i feel like i'm busier than ever right now with the work i'm doing yeah absolutely um michael what other um successful executives such as yourself would you like to give a shout out to or think should be on this podcast oh good good question um uh, that's a I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't ready for that one, but <laughs> I'm sorry. You can give me someone <laughs> offline too. That's yeah, okay. no, that's okay. I mean, I've always, uh, I mean, you probably won't get on the podcast, but I've always been inspired by, you know, Phil Knight and the work that he's done, you know, in really building Nike authentically. He's, he's, you know, way beyond that. But um, yeah. I think he had just such an amazing, insight into you know authentic connections to athletes building a brand from the ground up and um even with his immense incredible success he he still kind of remained grounded into a lot of those foundational pieces even, even as the company grew and exploded and so i think you know personally i think there's a lot that nike could continue to learn from some of that if they are able to continue to retain it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, he's a, a great person, of course, to shout out. Well, our last question is more of a fun one. I always love to give a little perspective on where people got started. So can you tell us about your first job? Actually, my first job, and it, I think I had a, a post on my website, but I was 16 years old and um, was a runner and uh, Nike was based here in Portland and I basically got my driver's license, went over and walked into the Nike headquarters and asked them if they needed any running shoes tested. And I walked out of that office with um, about 36 to 48 pairs of shoes to bring no back to my high school to get my team outfitted and and part of a product testing um, system. And at the end of the season, I brought all the shoes back. And so basically I became a, one of the early wear test coordinators when I was 16 years old at Nike and then started working at their retail store locally. So, so it's, I kind of grew up with the company yeah. um, and it's been, it's, you know, I, a lot of those lessons were learned through that. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. And that led you to a 30 year career at the company, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so actually, yeah, I was employee number 689. Wow. And it's, uh, which, if, if you date that back, it's 1978, so it's 35, 36 years, so. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Michael, how could get people get a hold of you or learn more about what you're doing right now? Yeah, so my website is incubatoru.com with the U, and my email is 
michael at incubatoru.com. And one of the really interesting projects I'm working on right now is uh, I'm building a track and music venue out in the Oregon desert overlooking the Deschutes River. It's, it's amazing. So a little concert venue, world-class track venue. So if you're, it's, it's called, the website is moppendrac, D-R-A-C dot org. Nice. When is that scheduled to go live? It's, uh, I was out there yesterday and it, it's beautiful. And, the, and I've mentioned that having an intersection of different people, but we had 40 National Guard um, a platoon of 40 National Guardsmen out there with heavy equipment and bulldozers moving dirt around. And, you know, basically it's, it's underway. So we're raising funds, but it's, uh, it's well underway. So it'll be done by next spring. Awesome. Well, appreciate you being on today. Um, and thanks for sharing your story. Yeah. And, and appreciate everyone for tuning in. This is Anna Crow. And for more insights, visit us at crowpr.com. Thank right. you, Michael. Thank and thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.